Hello and good day to Jackie, Felicia, Florine, good to see you. Dr. Martin, good afternoon. Good Melissa. And there's ABS iPad. Who is that? Hey, Ron. Hey, Hi, Dave. Yeah, I'm going to step away just for a second. I'll be right back. Sure, sure, sure. Hi, good evening. Is this Dr. Yvonne? Yes, I, I am here. I don't know if I'm yes, I It's Felicia. Yes, yes. Good evening to you, but it's a very good morning to me from wow. Malaysia. <laughs> yes, I know. And I, I do have someone who it would be 10 and 11 o'clock in the night. <laughs> and one of the things that we will do in this meeting is to right. see how well we can reorganize our times to ensure mm -hmm. that <laughs> to ensure that persons like yourself are not always having to do the very early <laughs> or yeah, very but late. I, yeah. But I guess, you know, when we're doing a global course like this, sometimes we just cannot accommodate everybody. So I'm ready for this. <laughs> <laughs> That's so graceful of you. And I really appreciate your gracefulness there. And you are in... Jamaica right now, right? Yes, I am in Jamaica. How's the weather? We had some rains today and that's welcomed, but our temperatures are always good. Good. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Praise God. We yes. have been having we, very hot days down here. We tend not to know the seasons very well. <laughs> <laughs> we have cool days, hot days, and hotter days. <laughs> well, it's better than Malaysia. We have hot days, hotter days, and even hotter days. Okay. No cool days. <laughs> Welcome, Pia. Hey. Hello. Uh, it's so good to see you. Good to see you, too. Yes, and we are approaching a couple minutes past that time. So we will begin and allow others to fall in with us, right? Sigun. Yeah. It's yeah. wonderful to see you again. Yeah, same here. Yes, and it's, it's, it's 11 o'clock, right? No, it's 10 now. It's 10 now, and to make yes. sure that you are quite awake, <laughs> I am going to ask you to open in prayer for us this okay. day, All right. night, whatever it is, Sigan. <laughs> thank you. Um, precious Father, we thank you for the good time to meet once again. Uh, to learn from one another and to learn and to speak. So we thank you for the opportunity to uh, continue our studies with VGU. Father, we ask that you grant us grace of diligence, wisdom, and Lord, attentiveness, and grace to be able to apply all the wisdom and the knowledge that we will get from this course. We give you praise, we give you honor. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Sigun. Yeah. Okay. Again, we just want to welcome you to personal assessment. I am excited, I am excited. about this course. It has been one of those courses that have certainly charted the redirection of my own life and as i guide you through this course i am praying that you will experience even 
a greater hand of God experience than I did. I'm going to ask you to mute your mic if you're not speaking because I'm getting a feedback. So if you mute, maybe that would write. It's now gone. With me this afternoon, this morning, is Dr. Martin Oedin. And also we have Dr. Dave Etage, who will be joining with me on this course through the nine weeks. And together, along with Dr. Leroy Hurt, who is not present with us here at this point, and also Dr. Kurt Risley, we will be placing ourselves at your disposal to guide you through the nine weeks and through to your final project. Today, we want to do several things. I will begin with you just giving a brief introduction of yourself, very brief, because you're going to be doing the more elaborate introduction of each other and greeting each other in the classroom. And then we will take a look at the syllabus to see how the course is structured, what are the expectations, how we will go about getting ourselves ready for the course. We're going to speak a little bit about some additional things like your book report expectations, the rubric that will be uh, used in grading your assignment, and the reading that you have to do. And most of all, we want to give you time to ask questions and to get yourself properly leveraged to begin the week. Some of you have already been, we know we have five early starters and we have those who have not yet gotten in the classroom. So I will take a little time on that. Right. One of the things we want to also um, pay some attention to is the time that is convenient for us to meet. The majority of us are on the, the end of the world where this is our evening after work. For at least five of us in the class, this is an not our best times. And so we're going to have to do some giving and taking to make sure that we accommodate each other. All right, so let me start with the just meet and greet. And since Dr. Aliud or Dean is here with us, I am going to allow her to speak first in the event she intends to leave shortly after. And then I will let you all do your introduction and Dave and myself will go last. It looks like you read my mind and you knew that I was leaving. <laughs> well, um, it's so good to see you all. Uh, some faces I know and some other faces I've, we've talked but we have not seen each other. So welcome to this class and um, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you there several times during the course of uh, these weeks. Uh, most of you know me, I'm the academic dean at uh, BGU and um, I'm there to serve you. So I'm also the director of e-learning which means that if you have any um, technical problem, please um, I will receive your email to the e-learning uh, at bgu.edu and uh, we'll work with you as much as we can to uh, make things work as smoothly as possible. Um, I also encourage you to uh, keep in touch with our um, librarian, librarian uh, Jennifer Roman. Um, she's a treasure of uh, resources um, regarding your readings, your research, etc. <coughs> and 
the success for this class and for most of your classes, if not all, is communicate. The more you communicate, the better you will learn and uh, the better you will also feel about your projects. So don't hesitate to email any of us as we need to um, help you and serve you to move forward. God bless. Thank you, Martin. Now let's start with Abram. I'm going to um, do the alphabetic stuff. Abram, just for a minute, tell us your expectation, who you are. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'm Abraham. My, I'm um, a pastor of a local church. I'm also an accountant. I, 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 I am from Nigeria, from, I, and I live in Lagos, in Nigeria. My expectation for the course, I'm really looking forward to it, and I'm so excited, particularly on the aspect of uh, cultural transformation. So as we go ahead, it's my very first course. I just started, so I'm looking forward to it, and uh, I'm just uh, being expectant. Thank you, Abraham. Thank you. Adair. Wow, I, I'm, I'm nervous and excited all at the same time. Um, my name is Adair and uh, I am a licensed mental health counselor in private practice here in, in uh, Seattle, well, Renton, Washington. This is also my first course with BGU. It's been a long time coming. I've delayed this journey back to graduate school for uh, many years now. So I'm a little overwhelmed with the thought of reading and writing so many pages, but I'm sure you all will speak to it and, and provide us some tips and strategies to make it possible. Uh, let's see, is there anything else? Yes, the one last thing. Is okay. That nervousness is not a part of this journey. Okay. All right. I'm gonna take <laughs> you at your word. <laughs> yes. That's the that's the last thing. And okay. The, All right. Very important thing. You are going to be teaching us. We are going to be learning together. Yes. And we are valuing each other in a way that there is no place for nervousness. Okay, all right. Okay, okay. got it, got Alrighty. it. Alrighty, Felicia. It's Hi, everybody. So I'm Felicia, and I'm from Malaysia. It is 5 a.m. right now here in Malaysia. I was, <laughs> I was hesitating whether I should just get to know everybody from the post, or I should at least be in the Zoom today. But as usual, I... You know, I prefer to really meet everybody in the Zoom because it's such a, it's such a precious opportunity. And um, so this is my fourth time, or rather this is my fourth course with BGU. ASM 702 is my fourth course. Um, I, must, I must perhaps share with Abraham and Adair since this is your first time. Um, it's, it's a wonderful journey to be on this, uh, on this, in this course in BGU. Because the one thing um, I can tell, I can share with you is um, we ourselves get, get transformed throughout this whole journey. Yeah. And the transformation, it's, it's amazing because it's on a spiritual level. But at the same time, it brings you to your vocation, you know, how, how you can actually get new insights and how God actually is leading you. Uh, with more clarity to what's your gifting and even for that matter, your calling. So I have enjoyed the course a lot. I am now, um, actually, I, 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 I was a director of ministry just about two years ago in the U.S. And when I came back for a three weeks vacation in Malaysia, the, the U.S. government refused to let me return back to the U.S. So I have been working off-site, off-campus, um, leading a church from Malaysia for one and a half years until, yeah, until 
until a time where I asked God, I said, you know, God, I cannot, I'm not going to be effective leaving the, uh, leading the church and raising the leaders from Malaysia. I said, you know, please show me very clearly that uh, your, your plans for me, you know, what, what is ahead of, what, what are the things that you have ahead of me that I really cannot see? And, and God has been very, very gracious because the one thing, the one thing that was very difficult for me to let go was my relationship back in the U.S. And over time, God has really uh, settled the heart, settled my heart on, on, on those issues and brought very clear clarity towards why he has had me here in Malaysia. And I actually found that reason, that purpose, that clarity in the, the overture that just happened about three months ago in Kuala Lumpur. Yeah, so I must say that God truly has, um, has prepared me or rather has actually paved the way for the work that is ahead of time here. And I am now leading um, an organization called Sovereign where we raise, where we equip and we raise business people in the community towards God's purposes. And in that work, we, we equip and train um, business leaders and organizational leaders and at the same time, we nurture their organization towards, towards, the, you know, towards God's kingdom, businesses, and purposes. So that's what I do. And I'm so glad to meet everybody. I just can't wait to get to know everybody on this Zoom. Thank you. Thank you, Felicia. And thank you, too, for playing that very important role in um, introducing BGU. Thank you. So, thank you so much. And you look great at 5 a.m. <laughs> thank, you. thank you that's the one thing i was going like okay <laughs> no makeup that's it you know neat yeah, no, <laughs> thank you and florine florine from guyana hello hello florine how are you i'm fine i'm fine classmates i'm very happy to be with here with you i um this is my one two three this is my fourth course too, but that's because I took a long break between 2013 and 2018. And so I jumped back in the classroom in 2018, January, having been out since 2013. Uh, there's no need to be nervous. One of the things that I like about BGU, I think BGU is one of the best things that's happened to me. Um, the reading at first I found extremely daunting, but everything you read is so precious. And everything you read can be applied almost immediately in something you're doing. I taught, see, I taught secondary school chemistry, and I'm now teaching little children, primaries, and there's so much that you need to depend on God for, and I find that BGU is helping me to gain the strength that I need. God bless you. Florine, I want to div divulge just a little secret because you've taught my best friend and I am old and retired. How long have you been teaching, Florine? I am now 75 and I was teaching since I was 21. And I am not even good at math, but you know we hold you precious. Thank you. Thank you for persevering and thank you for joining us. And we're looking forward to sharing your wisdom in this class. God bless that. You still sound like 21, I must <laughs> say. Gia, it's your turn. Let's hear from you. Gia, are you there? You were there. Okay, there we go. Can yes, everybody hear wonderful, me? Wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Gia Kelly, oh, and I um, did it wrong, Gia. It's fine. I, I get it. I get it all the time um, because of the spelling. The H always hooks people up, but it's Gia. Yeah. Gia. Um, and I am uh, currently in uh, North Florida. Um, and I've been here uh, for a number of years. I am excited. Um, this is my first class 
like a dare. So I am very <laughs> nervous and, and we're not using nervous, but just trying to, to figure out my new normal. Um, I'm a mom and a wife, a working woman. I have two young sons, uh, ages two and seven, who I love dearly. Um, but it's now or never. And so I believe that um, just the way that I found out about, about this, uh, this, the doc doctorate of transformational uh, leadership was just all, you know, all divine. And so I'm super excited um, about the journey. And that's kind of where my focus has been really enjoying the journey. Um, but I appreciate any tips that folks have <laughs> on how to manage the reading and, and all that good stuff. But um, I do agree that the, all of the books are um, something that I would read outside of this um, if I could. So it's, it's going to help me in one way or the other. Um, professionally, I'm a, a master level social worker. So um, I've spent a number of years working with uh, victims of trauma. Um, and I currently work in the area of early childhood, um, racial equity, um, and all that good stuff. And so I'm very passionate um, just about um, healing the body. That's really what I'm passionate about, healing those who hurt um, in and outside of the body. Um, and so I look forward to meeting all of you all, learning from you, growing with you, um, and getting all that I can from this, this experience. So I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. Jackie, Jackie, and I, my, my countrywoman. Hi, Jackie, it's your turn. Hi, everybody. I'm Jackie. I'm from Jamaica, as Yvonne said. This is my second time around. I took a break um, for about, what is it, two and a half, three years. Um, it was just personal issues. My husband broke his leg and so on, and just time just passed. But of course, it has been on my mind for so long just to restart. Um, and I'm really glad that I, you know, I think God spoke to me earlier this year. I had a retreat at church, and God spoke to me about what is it, you know, why, you know, what is the why? Why, why am I here? And what should I be doing with my life? And how am I advancing? um business um christ work in in jamaica so i'm a business development consultant i run my own firm um so i've spent a lot of my time working with businesses and their employees um but i do believe that bgu and this transformational leadership program is what i need to do to advance i've already done the overture which was life changing for me meaning and I saw things that I thought I knew, but I really didn't know as much as I thought I knew. Um, and I think those of you who haven't done the overture yet, you'll find that as life changing. I don't know if you come to Jamaica or where you go, but that cemented a number of things for me and why I've chosen to resume this, this program. Don't be daunted by the reading. Um, I was at the beginning. But what I found was that the information was so eye-opening and it was so revealing. And it also, I could identify with some of the, the areas and it also confirmed for me some things that um, I was not clear on. And it also connected a number of things in, in my life and, and, and just, just, just how we do things and where we ought to be looking. So... Um, it's just a matter of pacing yourself, I think. Um, I'm a work in progress myself. Busy time, busy. When you run your own business, it's, it's difficult. But committed, you have to be committed. And um, I, I just pray for discernment and just, just, just getting it right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Jackie. And do you know how my heart is bubbling up, right? <laughs> Thanks, Yvonne. And guys, Yvonne is without Yvonne, believe me. She's oh, my heart so is bubbling up. So I am just Yvonne listening to you and I'm soaking it all up. Yeah. And the other thing, guys, just one more thing to say, Yvonne, is that why I decided to even resume with BGU is the fact that you're a caring community. And we are all either working people or we're busy or we think we're busy, but the care and the kind of, um, it's like God chasing after you. That's the kind of, that's the kind of organization you are. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you so much. And and God chases us to chase after you. Trust me. He it, it it's as much a divine calling as it can ever be. <laughs> and oftentimes I think we hear what he's saying to you too, and we can't help but respond obediently to him. And I'm just overjoyed to just listen to you today and we won't say all the reasons why but <laughs> welcome Melissa, it's interestingly that there are names that are appearing in this course that means so much to me so there are three names <laughs> Adair you're one of them Melissa you're one of them and Gia, which I called Gia, is one of them, but, you know, very interesting. Melissa, are you there? I'm here, and I'm trying to figure out how to make my video work. I can uh, unmute myself, but I can't put my video on. You, just where you unmute, there is a, a symbol that looks like a barrel or a perfume bottle turned on the side. <laughs> And it says, um, start so video and I have clicked on it. I have, I've clicked on it. So there's no red line over the top of it. Anymore. Oh, maybe, but I don't think I'm being, I don't maybe think your right. camera on your computer is not allowing us, but, um, suffice it to say, go ahead. We're hearing you clearly. Okay. Well, my name is Melissa Killian. And I'm so glad to see a familiar face on the line. Hi, Felicia. I wish you could see me waving and smiling and <laughs> throwing you kisses, hugging your neck from afar. And we were on the overture in Kuala Lumpur, which was my first course with BPU and life-changing and revelatory on so many levels. Um, um, I, I get him off and log back on so I'm, I didn't get what the assignment was in terms of our introductory remarks um, I missed that but um, so what are we supposed to just introduce ourselves in our experience with BGU? Uh, yeah just very briefly Melis so in a minute okay. or two tell us what you want to tell us about you well, um, there's not a whole lot to tell um, this is my second course my first one was the overture and um, the best part of the overture was getting to hang out with Felicia and, and uh, fellowshipping with her. And I miss, miss that our talks um, were so enlightening and uh, deep and helping me answer some questions as well, which I hope to continue exploring in this course. So the list of the things that we're supposed to provide, the survey in terms of vision and values and whys and what fors and who am I's has remains to be seen, which is why I'm glad I'm taking this class. So I'm, I'm excited and expectant and really looking forward to getting to know all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Melissa. Sigun. It's your turn. All right. Thank you. Um, I'm glad to be part of this class. Um, this is my third class. Yes, this is my third class about the um, the overture in Fresno, 2016, I stopped for a while. And then um, I started back in July. I took a course in servant leadership with uh, Dr. Mackenzie. And I think that for maybe many that are starting um, their first course and starting with Dr. Mackenzie is a soft landing for you, I must tell you. So <laughs> you're going to find it easier than you think. So just Take it easy. Uh, that's why reading 13, 14, 15 books is not going to be a big deal. So <laughs> um, I'm looking forward to this course because um, going through the survey tells me um, the kind of things that we're going to be exposed to. And one of the things I love most about um, um, DGU courses is how it makes um, uh, learners to learn from uh, one another and um, I, I think uh, with a large class like this we will have opportunity and, and we're going through um, introducing ourselves from getting to know you I've seen that quite a lot of um, experienced uh, folks in the classroom so I'm excited um, to learn from everyone 
I live um, here in the UK, Manchester. Uh, I'm, I'm from Nigeria. Hoping to be here for a while, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to finish the course before I go back to Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you, Sidon. I don't know that you tell my dean that I am a soft landing. I don't know if I have a, a, a job after this one. <laughs> but um, the, the truth is, I have been spending some time looking at adult learning. And on purpose, Dr. Dave and myself have placed a particular um, video in the class for you. And I want you, as soon as you get a chance, to view that video, to look at what researchers are finding in the field of adult learning, and to understand that um, somehow we embrace that. I, I like to address you as fellow learners. I believe with all my heart that you carry so much value to the learning experience. And what we do here is to, to own our skills and to package it in ways, not to make us feel superior to others, but to really value each other and each other's perspective in the learning. It doesn't mean that I do not demand of you to be inquiring. And the more you research and the more you read and the more you reflect, the more you get from the course, right? But I cannot think of you as being incapable or insufficient. You are enough. And I feel very strongly that God has called you into this more than I can or anyone else can destroy your confidence, right? Um, so that's the soft landing. <laughs> that's the soft landing. Tammy, let's hear from you. Hello, everyone. Hello, Yvonne. Good to meet you. Second time, Tammy. I'm from Nigeria, and um, this is my fourth course on the BGU. And it has been very exciting, very transformational, and um, this particular course I'm expecting a lot because. Um, I've gone through four or five of the books, so it has already transformed my life already. So I'm waiting to learn from others and to add to what I've read um, and share ideas. Thank you very much for having me again. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you, and it's good to have you again in class. I think I've covered everybody, so now it's over to you. Dr. Dave Etage has been a tower of strength to me, a mentor, and he's extremely busy. Some of you may have met him if you had him give you guest lectures in, in particular theology of work, but he's, he's volunteered to come alongside me in this course and i am so grateful and you are going to find that he is such a resource and an example and a mentor for you as well i'm sure um dave this is your turn to talk to the class first of all too high of expectations you just put upon me <laughs> but i i am very grateful to be here. Um, I live in Wisconsin, which is in the northern part of the United States, and I took my first BGU course in Accra, Ghana in 2010 in an overture course. And I remember sitting in that class and uh, the lecturer was uh, Martin, if I'm correct, Stephen De, De Beer, is that his name? Yeah, yeah. 
Stephen DeBoer. Yeah. And I was the only business person in that class because I am a second generation business person. I'm in uh, gear manufacturing. I'm in a very blue collar environment. And very early on uh, in my journey, many people thought I was called to be a pastor. God had different plans and he said, I want you in the most dysfunctional place that you know of on the planet, which was our family business. So fast forward 20 some years after taking over the business and I find myself in Accra, Ghana with Dr. Stephen DeBoer and the only business person in the room and right in the middle of a lecture, he stopped and he said, what are you doing here? And I looked at him kind of stunned because I said, well, shouldn't I be here? Shouldn't BGU be for everybody, including business people and, and not just pastors and nonprofit and uh, leaders and so on? And we had a really good conversation that night, but that was the beginning of my journey, recognizing that um, I needed a lot of personal transformation because the 20 plus years in the family business had beat me up really bad. And uh, it, it's been a very, very difficult journey, which I'll share later as the course goes on. But what I've come to love about BGU is that we are all on different journeys. Um, rarely have, I don't think we've ever met a student who's had an easy journey. Um, a lot of pain, a lot of uh, heartache, frustration, some highs, many lows. And when we decide to be um, followers of Jesus, that is part of the journey. And what BGU has helped me to sort through, continues to do, is how do we navigate and how, how is our personal transformation connected to the paths and the responsibilities that God puts in our way? So I don't look at myself as a mentor. Um, I am on the board. Um, I do help Yvonne, and, and she encourages me as much as I encourage her, I hope. Um, but I, I look at all of you and every student at, at BGU as someone that I can learn from. And hopefully, um, I can provide some encouragement and, and perhaps be a guide. Because every journey is, all of our journeys are so unique. And we cannot be presumptuous enough to think that we know exactly what God is doing in your life. But as a community, I think we can bring discernment and some truth and some guidance to each other. So when I get involved with a class like this, I, I, I find it, I count it as a tremendous privilege to be able to get to know you, to walk with you and, and learn from you. And I, and I mean that sincerely. Um, we are mutual encouragers, and the journey is often hard enough. So if you're nervous about being this your first class or your fourth class, or you've got your dissertation and your thesis, whatever in front of you, um, the community can help carry each other's burdens. And uh, Yvonne is a tremendous encouragement, as, as most of you know. If you don't know, you'll, you'll learn that more and more. Martine's got a phenomenal heart and a vision for our school, along with Brad Smith. So um, I guess that's all I'll say for now, but I really look forward to getting to know and, and hopefully encouraging and learning from all of you. Thank you, Dave. And um, the more you speak, the more you affirmed what I said earlier. <laughs> so maybe you can't escape it. Well, here I am. By now, you know I'm sitting in Jamaica. What you probably do not know is that I wanted to go to the Blue Mountain Hills. That's where the best coffee in the world comes from. And I wanted to sit around with my people who are not well read or have any connection with academia. Because I just walked away from 30 years of banking at the top of my game. I had come to a full um, rejection of anything corporate. And so I gave away all the corporate attire and I told God what we were going to do together. It is interesting. I think he's still laughing at me. 
because in one of these personal assessment classes, when I was just assisting our president, Brad Smith, I found myself sitting in the middle of 17 students representing every continent in the world. In that class, we could hardly have a class where someone wasn't up at 2 a.m. It was just impossible to plan. And I came face to face with the fact that it wasn't about me. It wasn't about my plans to do what would have been so easy to do. But I was to embark on a very challenging journey towards equipping myself to be here with you. And I still ask him why, but every now and again, when I hear a student say something that makes me understand why, I said, thy will be done, Lord. So we're here. We're beginning another nine weeks of sharing together learning from each other, helping each other to um, blend what is required at a doctoral level as far as academic rigor with what hard changes are taking place. One of the things we believe about transformational um, leadership is that it begins with the transformation of the leader. And here is where personal assessment, um, often the student says, I am glad I started here. During these nine weeks, we will be looking at ourselves through various lens. We will be paying close attention to our personal learning community, sharing with them. And already you have seen your pre-course survey document that I have sent to all of you personally, but it is also posted in the classroom in the information page. I am going to ask you to take the time. It is a long document and it is um, not all to be assimilated all at once. So you will plan some of those activities, especially those that involve your personal learning community. Sharing some of your experiences in groups by next week when you get into your class, you will know what group you're in and you will begin to bond with each other as Oftentimes, what we see of ourselves and what others are seeing of us do not converge. But as we go through what the overtures refer to as this disorienting dilemma, we come to a place of convergence and we begin to listen to God as he speaks to others for, for our attention, or as he stops us on the way, as Jackie alluded to, and question us. And this is why I want to honor the balance between what you're experiencing, how you are reading and being strengthened, challenged, informed, and how it is guiding you because all of these elements are coming together to determine who you are and what you are. How is the course formative? We start with a look at the cultural aspect of your, your, your environment, how you see yourself in culture, as a culture changer. We move on to having you examine more closely your own life in terms of 
what has been my journey? So for those of you who have done the life map, yes, we revisit that life map, but we revisit it with some specifics in terms of your high time, hard time, your spiritual formation, all the things that forces you to take a deep look. And it is a good thing if while we're doing these weeks with specific um, subject focus, you're also reading alongside that, the area of your reading that corresponds so that you're pulling together things that you need to. I know that um, the very big question on Gia's mind is, how do I read so much and when? And I'm going to pull up and make available to you what researchers are saying about how you read a book, the speed reading, how you gather information, but know how and what kind of learner you are. I, for example, have I've introduced myself to those techniques but find that when a book is speaking to me, I cannot read the first, um, the introduction, the back, skim through the middle. I tend to want to read, digest, think about it for a day. So I know my learning patterns. You have specific learning patterns and you will find what works for you. More importantly, we understand that as an adult you're not being dressed up and placed on the school bus and sent to school and come back home to your dinner and whatever you are really throwing all these balls up and some are going to fall we want to honor each other by asking of you to ensure that if you are not able to commit to your weekly assignment on time that you indicate that. You're a part of a group and we want also to pray with you and to be of whatever help we can. I always think of this class and adult learning in this way. There was, a, and there is, I think it is a true story, a group of children with autism were running a race and one fell. The others noticing that one fell, turned, got to him or her, brought their, their, their team member back on his feet. Then they hugged each other and walked to the finishing line. That was their understanding of the race. I want to feel that what God has called us to do and to be is to be in an autistic race like that one, where we, we're not celebrating who gets to the race, the front, and we're not celebrating who got the highest grade, but we're seeing ourselves as being called by God along specific journeys and we are embracing each other to the finish line if ever we get a chance to do that okay i want to start by sharing the syllabus because we want to very quickly run some things through on the syllabus and um let me get there first um, in order not to to get you into my crowded desktop let me just um, go to the syllabus and open that up then share. And this is not a lecture. So I want you to stop me along the way, ask whatever questions you need to ask so that this can be as interactive as it could possibly be. And we try to be as quick as we can as well in getting to the end of this. I think I brought that up now and it's time to share. I think the chat is activated. I will look at that in a minute, but I'm gonna bring you the syllabus up. 
Uh, already. And when I start sharing, I might have some difficulty with the chat. So um, forgive me if I, if I come back to it a little later. Okay, so are you seeing the syllabus? Are you? Yes. Oh, yes. 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 I just I just want to be sure that you are seeing it. And um they there there is pretty much a lot on some aspects of it which has to do with the survey and well. Um, I think what I brought up was the survey and not the actual syllabus. Let me go back in and select it very quickly. Um, we have in this class master students as well as doctoral students. It is very important that when you choose your syllabus, you choose your syllabus based on your particular course. So if you are a May student, then you are doing your MSc 607 Toolkit 1 syllabus. If you're a Magul student, then you're doing your ASM 602. And if you are a detail student, you're doing ASM 702. It is the ASM 702 syllabus that I am going to focus on um, this time around. Uh, and I'm getting there very quickly now. I think I've brought it up. And are you seeing it? Yeah. Good. Good. All right. Yes, you can see it. Yeah. Yeah. And we will, we will forego the preamble. As I told you, Dr. Hurt was not able to make it this early to our first meeting, but you will be meeting with him. And, and soon he has already introduced himself in the getting to know you, and some of you have started to respond to him already. Our syllabus speaks to the support team. Um, you will substitute um, Dr. Martin for Dr. Judy in this particular um, aspect of, of it as well, or not substitute, but add Dr. Martin as far as the e-learning side of things are concerned. I invite you to pay attention to the desired learning outcome. This desired learning outcome comes back to you in terms of the rubric that we will talk about later that speaks to how we will um, look at what you have written in your assignment. So pay attention to the desired learning outcome. Every syllabus in BGU carries the eight perspective on which we've built our BGU community uh, as a part of the DNA of BGU. And I think we see it so often that for those of us who are seeing it, we tend not to read it all the time. But maybe it is something that we need to be reading and rereading as often as it comes to us. Our pre-course work, We've spoken about that. I've written to you about that. Are there any questions regarding the pre-course survey that you have already received? Okay, I take it that you're very clear on that and you will be doing that, focusing on it and having it ready for me as soon as you can. I know that um, Dave would like to begin to read it as well, so we're looking forward to getting that submitted. Your um, aspects of it that are ready can be submitted. There are aspects that you will not be able to submit soon, but week one is asking you to submit your biography. Um, you do the initial life recording and so on. It's a good idea that you work at submitting <laughs> as quickly as possible. Okay. Um, online participation. 
<laughs> very important in a course like this. And more importantly is that we're asking you for your thoughts, your experience. And, and then very often, and just a moment, let me, let me mute Florine as she experiences that cough. Um, okay, very often um, I would say to, to, to persons, note, this is probably the only course in which you will be asked what is your response, right? And so often I get what ought to be and not what your response is. I can tell you that when we begin to open up and be true to ourselves in this setting, we grow because inevitably we discover that we're not alone in this particular limitation and so we begin to become support persons for each other and we are growing because we are sharing the successes the attempts at transforming the particular area so, so do not do not do the technical preacher's response. Instead, allow the question to search you and allow the reading and all the support material and your fellow um, learners' response to feed into and inform your response, even as you honor each other. So it doesn't mean that you have to agree with everything somebody else says, but in the kindness, you may point to reading or reflection or your own personal experience that does that. No, if you do not participate in the discussion or you do so the last thing on Sunday night, you have denied the other persons the opportunity to respond to you because they're going on to the next week, right? And so you may not get a fulsome, robust response and you've also denied them the opportunity of sharing in your response. So I'm going to ask you to honor the things you do before Thursday, the things you do after Thursday as much as possible. One of the things we asked is for you to begin to wrestle with the kind of life changes that you will have to make or will be necessary in order for you to do justice to what is required of you. This week is a test week. You will see your list of things to do and I'm going there for those persons who are first timers and have not yet explored the classroom. I am going to go there quickly. Your group presentation is part of your, your online participation grade, and we will talk more about this then. I don't think it is important for us to get too bogged out into the details of that now in the interest of time. I need to speak to you about the book reviews, particularly because because you need to pay specific attention to what is written here. But also importantly, I have been asked to have you pay attention to what is not written here, but what is implied in that word interact. And interact, um, for our dean and for those who are looking at the academic standards of the doctoral and the master's program is asking for you to compare other opinions within the area you are covering, within the book you're covering other 
authors on the subject that you're reading in your required and also in your um, recommended reading. When you go through your, your survey, you will find that it invites you to go through pages of books and hit on the books you feel will support your interest and your trajectory. And as you do that, then you will in fact begin to um, align those books, read them, see how they are interacting with each other and how they are supporting or at least not supporting um, each other and share that so that you're building your arguments in ways that show that you are reading for your degree. I hope I've done justice to that. Um, I'm sure yeah. more will come of that later on. And Dave, I know you want to add something there. Yes, um, I wish somebody would have shared with me a tip um, right from the beginning when I started with BGU. When you do your book reviews, include those quotes that really are meaningful to you and speak to your heart. And, make, and, and I would include as many of those quotes in your book review as possible because when you write your, your paper, not only for this class, but down the road for maybe your dissertation or your thesis, you will be coming back to reference these books. And it makes writing your dissertation, your thesis, so much easier if you record those special quotes now instead of having to go back and reread those books to find those very pertinent quotations. So if you do them now, it will save you dozens and dozens of hours down the road. And thank you, Dave, because uh, once you said that, I, I don't have um, time to share with you. But on my journey for each, I am an ebook reader. I'm an ebook reader because, yes, I don't like the smell of leaves and whatever. And I am um, trying to reduce bookshelves and books to dust. Some persons will tell you they like the smell and feel of the leather and the bounding and so on. But it did two things for me. For each book, I opened a page, a Word document that said, notes on, uh, Dave, what's the name of your book? I am so dying to, to read it. Dave. Good work. Dr. Edge is bringing a book out, and boy, we can't wait. But it's, uh, we, I put the notes on whatever yeah. the title is, and I go back to this very same page I'm focusing on. And I'm not saying I'm just saying this for for newcomers because those who have done four courses have already worked their methodology out. But I know that the author's intent is usually somewhere in his introduction. And I search through to make sure, and sometimes you get it in the first chapter. Sometimes he goes as far as the second chapter. When I find it, I copy and paste it. One of the beauty of copying and pasting is that the page number or the locator number comes with a copy each time, right? The things I want to interact with because they mean so much to me or I disagree or I have heard it said otherwise or whatever, I do the same. And then I will exit my notes knowing that I may have seven, eight pages of notes on that book. I only need 500 words. Could you respond to Adair real quick? She has to leave. What, is this session being recorded? Yes, it is. It okay. is Adair. Okay, thank you. Um, it is being recorded, and it will be made available in the classroom by tomorrow morning. 
Irene. And, and sorry you have to leave us, but you will have the recording and you will be allowed to, to ask additional questions once you've read them. All right. Um, you, I think I did correct the document about the submission of the survey. It really is to be submitted to me. Maybe um, there are aspects of it that was not um, corrected in the document. That's what happens when you are um, going through a document and reviewing it, but it is um, to be submitted to me. You will also see in week one that there are places there for you to deposit it, right? Um, so not to Dr. Smith, please. He is the originator of this course. He spent many years with us with it, but he stepped away. And so I, you, you need to bombard me with that and not him at this point in time. Not to worry, he will be our guest lecturer. Um, maybe more than once in this course, you will be seeing him um, popping in and really giving us his, his wit on that. So yes, why I told you about what I did there is that it supports what Dave just said to you. Because whenever I need to go back to one of the books that I'm sure said something, I already have the note with the quote, with the page number, and all that is necessary for me to use in my um, dissertation later on. All right? So um, you will be expected to show how you are comparing, contrasting, interacting with other authors in the, in the course. Your individual project, again, watch closely what happens in the class each week. Each week you write a chapter of your project. The course is so aligned that there is a week when we deal with calling and life vision. There is a week when we deal with um, communications. There is a week and spiritual formation. So as you respond to those weeks and, and, and really absorb what's happening there, then you will find that you are actually creating your chapters as you go along. Continue to look at your syllabus from time to time. Reflect on what you have to do. We try along the weeks to say to you, um, by now you should be here. What we've done is to begin to make the drop boxes available for you to do a, a book each week. For those of you who can manage that, you're not being penalized for not doing it. But if you can, it is in fact a great way to be on top of things because if you allow all the eight book reviews or the six book reviews for the master students to be done after your nine weeks, you will find yourself pressed for time on that. Any question there regarding the syllabus? Any question? No, already. Let's, let's hurry along. No question may well mean that you're dying for this thing to come to an end. All right, I am taking you to the personal assessment course and I'm taking you to dashboard. Now the dashboard is usually the place where we place any important information that you need to see and the dashboard automatically links to your email. So if something goes on the dashboard, it goes to everybody who is a part of the class, including the professors. We usually reserve the dashboard for the purpose of important bulletins. All right? Now, once you have 
looked at your dashboard, you need to get to your information page. And for those of you who already have done this, you know it. Your information page describes the course. It tells the end date. It tells by what time you can drop the course without penalty and all that. And it lists some of your readings. It gives you the syllabus. Notice under the files, you do not just have the syllabus, but you have the template in which you should write your final project. You have a sample project and a sample book review. And there are the rubrics that we use when we are um, grading the assignments. And it is good for you to familiarize yourself with the rubric so that you ensure that you understand the, the, the methodology behind the grades that you've given. But beyond that, we get to lessons. And in the unnamed lesson, you have virtual offices, and I want to point them to you. Dr. Kurt Risley is not here with us. You have Dr. Etage's virtual office, Dr. Hurt, who is not here, and myself. If you want to send us a personal mail, then do not go to the discussion forum, which is there. But instead, I would recommend you look for our email addresses, which are all in our mini bio here, and you send the mail from here. That way, um, it is a mail that's seen by the person whom you're addressing alone. So I just wanted to, to bring this to your attention. Uh, we're going back to lessons because that's all I wanted to show you there. And we are in week one. We are in day two of week one. By now you would have read the welcome. You would have seen your to-do list, which is a little long. The heavier days are these days, okay? So your to-do list speaks to uh, all the items that you are expected to complete. Uh, by Thursday and the things you are expected to complete after Thursday. Pay some attention to that and make sure that you are following on that. One of the very first things that you're asked to do is to get to the getting to know you. And here is where we've come in and we've greeted each other as if you were sitting in a classroom. Beautiful pictures are here, and we're saying hellos and shout outs to each other. But it is also important because very often we see from your getting to know you the common interests you share. And for my part, I tend to glance at this to see how best I can place you in groups that complement each other so that you can be robust support to each other. So tell us about yourselves in ways. Um, you're wondering who are those two people in your class. They're my grandkids, so I introduce me with my grandkids. Um, the getting to know you. Um, is something that I would like you to, once you're through with us here, if you have not done it yet, please do that, all right? Then you will also have chapel, which is optional, but any morning you get up and you feel you need to just chill, get there and play the song and worship, and if you feel like sharing your thoughts, share them. Uh, we certainly, if you have, this is a class where do not be afraid to say, pray me through A or B or C. We want to be the kind of support to each other. You asked about the pre-course survey, and there are some surveys that will be open to the class. You don't mind everybody reading, and there are others you probably, based on the information you've put there, just wanted to be available to your professor do that. 
there is an option for you to do that. Some of your reading for this week, we have provided for you within the classroom. And there is also the lecture done by Dr. Smith, which we have retained, which guides this week's discussion and the PowerPoint presentation as well. All of these things you need to at best access before you enter your week one discussion. And by Wednesday night, you really need to um, begin to respond to your discussion. It is important that you are responding to the discussion, not purely from, this is what I think, amen, but what are the references? What are the thoughts? What are the readings that are supporting your response? And making sure to that you practice your APA when you quote or cite from a particular reading or so on, because that, that boosts your response and it helps to share what is happening in what you're reading with others who may not have read as yet. And then your book review, if you have already read a book, written the review, you can get that done by Sunday, put it in. If you get it done next week, Monday, put it in. It's there, the book review box will always be open. You can go back to previous weeks, but we will allow you to do that every week. Quickly, I have run through what you should have already seen and what you may have already begun to respond to. I know someone has already posted their response to the discussion question, which means someone has already read these chapters and is really getting ready to go with all of that. Any question? No, do I have you? Are you still here? Can someone say amen? Yes, I'm still here. <laughs> okay, I want to be sure that um, midnight is approaching and uh, someone not falling asleep on me. No, right. I'm still here. Yeah, good. Tammy's still there. Yeah. Jay's there. Felicia is just about I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Okay, Jackie is there, right? Florin is there. I'm, I'm still here. Ah, oh, yeah. Here. Um, not yet midnight, right? <laughs> 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 All right. So then, you, you got me. You got me. And, and by next week, you will be holding the hands of those who um, are not so sure-footed. Jackie, I know that when you did Overture, you weren't doing nine weeks of all of this. So this is kind of new to you. So it's a little bit more taxing, but it is enjoyable. So get in, dig in. And if you are lagging, let us know. Let us know. All right, we're here for you. Finally, I wanted to talk about your availability. Are there persons on this call now who cannot do mornings? And when I say mornings, I am talking about 10, 11, 8, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Let I think when I work this through, 10 o'clock would be about end of day for my African friends. And I don't know what time 10 a.m. would be for you. <laughs> for you all the way over there. Because I certainly miss the fact that Felicia, you were not in USA. So what would a um, morning in USA be for you? So right now, I'm just 12 hours ahead of you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. When it comes to daylight, sa or rather daylight saving time, when during the fall. All right. So if we then, did that 10 a.m., Felicia, that would be what for you? 
10 p.m. for me, which is fine. <laughs> Well, I'm good either way because I'm also a morning person, but I'm morning at six o'clock, but you know, five oh o'clock is just an hour earlier. And, and, and if I went six, I would be putting Tammy um, down to midnight. So <laughs> I, I wanted to see just how we can make sure that we're not placing you all the time at your worst hour because i'm looking at tammy and he's blinking a lot which means that he's dying to sleep mm -hmm. right? yvonne, and, yvonne are you uh, saying that it would be 10 a.m in every week 10 a.m no, or no no i just okay. wanted to know for example we're going to be having guest lectures we have um some of our authors who will come and spend some time with us Mm -hmm. Right, Dr. Aturge is one of our authors we will be reading soon. But you have Bill Hendricks who will speak on giftedness, and you have his text as part of your, your, your reading. We have Rob Martin. Unfortunately, Rob did um, surgery on his eyes, but he's one of our gurus on the issue of job fit. Right? And he would also give us some personal um, tutoring on how to present our proposal or messaging document, how to say what we're called to do in a way that it is said concisely and also understood by all concerned. A very good um, session in personally taking your document and making recommendations and i'm really praying and we pray that he will be well enough to be able to see to do this um he did some surgery on his eyes recently now i know somebody like rob is more likely to be in the morning than the afternoon i just wanted to get a, a feel because i want to to at times make sure that uh those who are having to stay up very late get a reprieve from having to do so all right so i'm not hearing any i can't i can't i can't and um i'm sure you will bear with me if we rotate this a bit from time to time what is this class every Tuesday? um I am trying to make it every Tuesday so that you can mentally frame Tuesday. Is there a problem with Tuesday for anyone in particular? Uh, sometimes I have meetings, so it would be, um, you know, you don't, I don't know when sometimes I'll have a meeting at the end, so. Right, okay, Jackie. And at all times we record, right? Yeah. Now, when it comes to our presentation time, I will be, um, Sigun, can you mute for me? I think I'm getting a feedback, yeah. When it comes to our presentation time, I'm doing a, we will schedule presentation in the morning and in an afternoon. So okay. that we're sure to get those persons who would prefer um, daylight presentation to get a chance to. So um, Sigun and Tammy and Abraham, you're going to get to do your presentation when you're bright eyed, bushy tail and very alert. We're not going to ask you to do your presentation at midnight, right? Uh, Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, how long are these uh, class sessions scheduled for? Because I can, this is the middle of the workday, the uh, anytime nine to five, Monday to Friday for me. So oh. I'm at the office and I did um, jump off a meeting to, I knew I had this call today, but now yeah. I've got clients waiting for me because I only All scheduled right. it. Um, we want to say 60 minutes, um, 90 maximum if you are having questions, but we would really like to keep it down to 60. 
Okay, that said, I'm going to have to jump off the call and I'll make sure that next time I, I carve out a 90 minute block of time right. in the middle right. of the day. Okay, thank you so much. It was such a pleasure to meet all of you and I look forward to our next session together. Thank you. And I'll be seeing you in the getting to know you area. Please. <laughs> Later. Okay, looking thank you. forward to that. All right. Okay, We're bye -bye. wrapping up. More questions? Bye. Dr. Yvonne, I have one question. Sure. So just, actually, it's really a question of clarify, uh, clarification. So we are meeting every Tuesday for the yes. nine weeks? Well, right. Is that the plan? It may not be a Tuesday if a guest lecture cannot do a Tuesday. Okay. So I don't want to write it in tablets of stone that I can't. I have guest lectures who have not yet committed to the suggested date and time. All right? Okay. So All right. to that extent, um, okay. Um, All right. But the plan is we are meeting every week for the nine weeks. We're meeting every week for the nine weeks. And we're going to okay. have fun too. It is not <laughs> sure. going to be a lecture every week. Um, yeah. We have some exciting debates and stuff set up. When Dr. Dave comes in, he's coming from the left side and um, you <laughs> will be having a meeting every week. We're not going to okay calling you into a lecture every week but we're going to be learning every week sure together. thank you very much thank right. you uh, already now the other thing is that i i really intend to follow your discussion and to um, make suggestions um share with you what i'm reading and so on and um, feel free to respond to, to, to that so that we know that you're actively in the conversation, okay? And I will try my best if you're speaking to me to respond directly. Do not expect me to say that is wrong and that is right. If there is going to be such a conversation, they're private, all right? And they're held outside of the common area. So that we're not we're not about you know calling out persons publicly, and I trust that none of you will be doing that either. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for a beautiful evening. I'm excited. Um, I'm not nervous. I'm excited, and I'm looking forward to the time we share together. Dr. Dave, can you take us out, please, with prayer? Sure, thank you. Father, we are grateful that we are able to be part of this class and part of your kingdom, your journey, and you have your hand on us through all of this. And I am convinced that none of us are here by accident. But Father, it's also, I know it will be a challenge to, to juggle work and home life and demands and pressures so I ask that you would hover over every one of us to, to organize and orchestrate all the details and we would be able to have that space in our lives for you to speak deeply into us. To be um, willing and have the courage to be changed, to take a, a, a look at ourselves as you look at us and to be responsive to the call that you have for each of our lives. This is a tremendous opportunity and a privilege to be a part of each other's lives. And I pray that we would carry these treasures and privileges uh, with great care, great respect, great humility. And I look forward tremendously to what you have in store for all of us. We just praise you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you all. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the next class. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Enjoy your Bye. Have a good evening. Bye. Nice to meet everyone. All right. Bye, everyone. Have a good night. Yeah, good night.